If today's video gets 10,000 likes, I will wrap my McLaren 570S, whatever color you guys decide, even if that means purple, like what Stradman has on his cars. Uh, that's, that's the goal today, guys. 10,000 likes and we wrap the McLaren and put it on video for all of you. Welcome to Life of Palos, guys. I am Aaron Palos and welcome to another beautiful day of supercar community news for all of you. And we've got a crazy, crazy episode beyond the wrapping stuff, beyond the like goal that we put up. Uh, we've got crazy news about Alex Choi and a very interesting thought piece about daily driven exotics and sort of the turn that they've made over the past month and don't forget guys to subscribe to our channel right away we're gonna be hitting 170,000 subscribers any day now we're very very close and if you subscribe you might win a ps4 pro or an xbox one i'm giving away two of them when we hit that number all right into our main story all right guys first in our news today i'm so excited about this alex Choi has released a very interesting picture it's actually not the picture it's the caption itself that reveals that he's bought a new supercar yeah fresh off of buying the tesla model x and all the other cars he has the 720 the v3 unicorn all the crazy cars he has he's bought another car and and the details that he gave about what kind of car this could be are very, very specific. And don't worry if you guys didn't see this post, it was very easily missable because it wasn't posted on his main account. It was posted on his secondary account, which is much smaller, uh, called Life of Alex Choi. So we got essentially four clues. We're gonna break it down and then we're gonna talk about the different cars that it could be. And there's not as many cars as you would think here that it could possibly be. So it's a three pedal car, so it's a manual. It's a a rear wheel drive car it's european and in alex's words it's fast as yeah it's very fast so there are the clues that we have guys a manual supercar european with rear wheel drive that's also extraordinarily fast there's just not too many cars that fit that bill and honestly you know what has alex even been talking about for getting for some time now so there's a lot of different cars being thrown out there uh there's a porsche gt3 a lot of people think it could possibly be that car it would make sense you know that the porsche gt three is a great manual supercar from Europe, rear wheel drive, all that kind of jazz exists. Could be a manual Aston Martin Vantage. Uh, could even be something crazy like a Porsche Carrera GT. Uh, but honestly, guys, you know, I'm not even convinced of those particular cars. I think it could be something, you know, way outside of the box too. Although it definitely could be something like a GT3. I think it could also be something like a Radical as well. So uh, what do you guys think? Put in the comments below. Uh, the comments on the Life of Alex Choi Instagram account are just filled with guesses but I really want to know what you guys think here. This kind of came out of left field. Nobody saw him getting another supercar, but we have confirmation that yes, the car is coming. Look for it early next week. I'm assuming it will be released on the Alex Choi YouTube channel. If you guys know Alex Choi's YouTube channel, he only posts like maybe once every three to four weeks. So whenever he does, it's normally a pretty big event when he's buying a car, doing something crazy with Amelia. I mean, like lots of crazy stuff goes on there, but he just doesn't post all that often anymore. So maybe Make sure to go check out his YouTube channel. We'll have a link for that channel in our description below. And let me know what you think, guys. Are we looking at a Porsche? Are we looking at an Aston Martin? Something crazier outside of the box? Put in the comments below right now, and we'll see you next week. All right, guys, into our next story. So our next story is going to be a little bit different, guys. It's not actually specific news on something that happened over the last 24 or 48 hours. It's more of a collection of thoughts and ideas over the past, like, one to two months. So if you guys remember, we did some big stories a couple weeks ago talking about how dealing Driven Exotics was under fire uh, for sort of how they've been running their channel. Now, what does that mean? Basically doing a lot of super content, doing some things that have been very new for the channel, you know, like the CarMax stuff, you know, gas challenges, some of which were very, very successful on their channel. But a lot of people seem to be very frustrated with the direction that Daily Driven Exotics was headed, and it showed in some of their views for some time. People got a little bit frustrated. They definitely made their voices heard on the community tab for the YouTube channel uh, within Instagram comments. We covered all that at length and it appeared that Daily Driven Exotics was really sort of on the precipice for whether or not they were going to continue down the same path or change back to what made them extraordinarily popular and got them their 2 million plus subs on YouTube. But fast forwarding to today, uh, all of that sort of, we'll call it like online hate for today, most of that has really evaporated. We haven't really seen a lot of it anywhere in the community tabs, anywhere in the comments, and the flood of comments that we have got have basically been evaporated 
evaporated over the course of the past couple of weeks. A lot of major changes have taken place in the Daily Driven Exotics channel over the past two weeks specifically, and we'll cover a couple of them now, and then I want to get your thoughts on why Daily Driven Exotics seems to have turned the corner back to what made them very successful. So during the time period where they were having a lot of issues with sort of fan backlash, uh, you know, a lot of people were upset because, you know, we didn't really see a lot of the Mercy, we didn't see much of the Tire Slayer, the Huracan, and really the, the main car of the channel was the Supra. And obviously they did a lot of really fun stuff to that car. They wide bodied it, you know, all the crazy stuff that they did in that car. That seemed to be a good source of views for them for some time, but they got a lot of criticism for being kind of late to the party, and they definitely joked about it themselves. Obviously the, the Supra is gone now, uh, sold back or given back to the dealership or whatever their arrangement was to begin with, and they've purchased the Ferrari F12 now, which is a pretty big deal for their channel. Obviously they're doing lots of crazy stuff to it. You can go check out their Instagram account if you want to see what they've been doing. Uh, we got word in our last episode that the twin turbo tire slayer, the Lamborghini Huracan, is coming back and is almost ready to be put back on the streets. They got the MP412C uh, with a brand new exhaust on it. We've been able to see what that's going to look at. It's going to have an insane tune on it as well. The Squadra Corsa is going to be getting some major upgrades to it. All of this happening in the last two weeks or so. So why are we talking about all of this? What I want to ask you guys is what do you think was missing from the Daily Driven Exotics channel? during the, the rough spots that they were having about a month ago? And are the changes that we just mentioned what sort of took them out of that and put them back on a good path? I want to know what you guys think about this. Was it as simple as just not having a lot of exotics on the Daily Driven Exotics channel for that brief period of time that made people falter in their fandom? I ask this question uh, mainly because I think it's very interesting to sort of dissect why a channel rises and falls within a particular community on YouTube over time. Time. A lot of channels that were popular back when I started following automotive YouTube, you know, two or so years ago, are not as popular anymore. Without naming names, you can probably figure out who that's going to be. And channels that were on the bottom of the rung have sprouted into incredible subscriber base and daily views, you know, massively destroying everybody else in the industry. Look at Stradman, for instance. When I met Stradman, he was at, I think, 380,000 subs. Most of his videos did, you know, one to 150,000 views per video. You know, the first video, I ever did with him, I think only got 132 or 140,000 views. And now he's averaging close to a million views a video. What changed over the course of his trajectory upward? And why has channels like his gone up while other people have gone down? We'll probably dive more into this over the course of the next couple months. But I think it would be very interesting to track the trajectory of your favorite automotive YouTube channels and sort of dissect why they've gone up or down and whether or not that meant that they were losing communication with their fans at the times of change, that a new wave of, you know, young people were watching the automotive channel and wanted something different. That's what I want to jump into over the course of the next couple of weeks. Thanks for bearing with me if you guys got this far in the video. Uh, we got some major cool announcements to talk about. Uh, Burlacker had an incredible video going viral for his channel right now, revealing his purple wrap for his Mustang. I gotta tell you guys, this is one of the coolest wrap reveals I've ever seen on automotive YouTube. It just has an extraordinarily fun feel. Obviously, it's great to have Stradman there too, with all of his purple cars. Go check out the video and uh, a pre of congratulations to Burlacker because Burlacker is going to hit 100,000 subscribers probably within the next day or so. Uh, the last video is getting insane traction right now. I imagine he's probably going to gain at least three to 5,000 subs, if not more, off that video alone. So go check it out. Congratulations in advance to Burlacker on the big, uh, well, six-figure mark. Now, I don't watch a lot of award shows, uh, but the Streamy Awards happened over the past couple days, and a big shout out here to Donut Media, who won the Streamy Award for Best sports. This is an incredible achievement, guys. To have one of our own in the automotive community win that award is a very, very big deal. So congratulations to the entire team at Donut Media. You set an example for everyone, myself included. We can only try to be as amazing as you guys have been over the past couple years. Congratulations. Now, Stradman has an incredible video out uh, talking about how he's going to twin turbo the Lamborghini Gallardo. Uh, this is a car that has been on the channel, obviously, since basically day one for him, but we haven't seen a lot of over the past couple months. And honestly, probably the last year to two years. Uh, I think the biggest thing here is obviously he has a lot of other crazier cars now. Uh, the Aventador, the Jeep, you know, all the crazy cars that he has. The Gallardo has sort of taken a back seat to a lot of that. So seeing it jump into the twin turbo realm to be the fastest car in his garage is going to be a pretty incredible thing. So watch out for that, guys. Make sure to check out Stradman's channel if you haven't seen that video. And rounding off our day, guys, Doug DeMuro reviews the Aston Martin DBX. And this is a pretty fantastic car, guys. If you haven't checked out 
the DBX, you're missing out on uh, Aston Martin's SUV offering. It seems like all the major, you know, crazy exotic car places are doing that. It started with the Urus, and now we got the DBX, and we're gonna have the Ferrari one. So, so get ready, guys. The uh, the exotic SUV is coming to the rest of the world, I suppose. And that is all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you did, and I uh, just have a fantastic weekend, guys. I just I, the privilege that I feel being able to talk to you guys about. You know, car speculation is just one of the coolest things in the world. If I think back to, you know, a year and a half ago when I, I think I averaged 2,000 views a video to, to where we are now where we're averaging like 70 to 100, it's just, it's absolutely incredible. And I thank you guys for all the support you've given our channel. You know, I do this because I think it's fun to speculate about people's cars and make guesses and try to find clues. And it's all, you know, for the most part, pretty harmless fun. So I hope you guys appreciate that and enjoy it. Just thank you guys for the support. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll catch you later. Bye.